Hi, not sure whether this will help you or not, but I, like you, have got a MIDI keyboard that I use for live performances that has no controller components, no faders or buttons or rotary controls. Um, but I still have my various sounds loaded up in Reaper and different tracks. I'll explain that layout in a moment. And I have the bottom, the very bottom two keys of my um, full octave keyboard. It's an 81 key keyboard. Um, program so that it will go up and down and each time it selects a track it's ready to play instantly and I simply don't use those two keys to try and play any notes otherwise disaster ensues okay so let's have a look uh, most of the sounds are in contact uh, there's five sounds there not all of them, I can use other VSTs as well, so for example I also use uh, Lounge Lizard for the Rhodes sound. If you look at the routing, let's take um, this bass guitar. This is routed through um, to track 1 to contact 5, and if we look on contact 5 on the actual VST itself and look at the bass, then that's responding to MIDI channel 1. Grand Piano is MIDI Channel 2 and so on, so if we look at the piano, close that, look at the piano routing, that goes to, not that one, that's different, the piano routing goes to MIDI Track 2, and so triggers the piano on contact. We can have some complex splits and layers as well. Uh, so for example with this uh, patch here is bass, piano and organ. If we look at the routing there it's actually sending all MIDI channels because I have a JSFX, uh, a MIDI keyboard splitter uh, which I can put on the stash if anyone hasn't got that and this gives me three splits. The first split goes from note 1 to 59. 59 is the B before just C4. Uh, I know that MIDI channel 1 is uh, the bass guitar uh, on contact. MIDI, the, the second split goes out on MIDI channel 2 which is the piano and it goes from note 60 so that's the C4 up to note 90 and also transpose it down an octave and the third split is I happen to know is uh, for MIDI channel 4 is an organ, a Hammond organ, and that goes from 91 uh, to the top of the range and transposed two octaves. So that all gets routed into contact and then of course triggers the appropriate um, instruments, multiple instruments in that case. Okay, the actual action that does the, the up and the down Let's have a look at those, bring up the action list, uh, find shortcut, I'll press the lowest key, takes me to this action here that I've called previous track and solo. Now it does a little bit more than that, first of all it selects all the empty items and sets their colour to black. Now the items that I'm referring to here are, if I can get to them, these items, let's just close that down. Let me just explain these items. Each item here is simply an empty item. You do insert empty item. And then I put the name of the patch and the stretch to fit to item. Okay, so those are the only items in the project, if you like. Okay, back to the action list back to the previous action, so previous track and solo. So it selects all the empty items, which is everything in the project, all the items in the project. It sets them to black. It unarms all tracks for recording, it unsolos all tracks, and then it goes to the previous track, which of course selects it. It then makes sure it sets the input of that selected track to MIDI all channels. Um, it solos the track, it sets it to record armed, it sets the monitoring on, and it selects the first item in the selected track, which is the empty item, and it sets it to the default colour. 
So basically that kind of lights up that track. If we look at the other action, which is next track and solo, it's exactly the same, except it goes to the next track rather than goes to the previous track. 